Hey gang, let's talk about model type and codes on Briggs and Stratton engines and how to decipher everything, okay? I'm going to start down here with the model. This is a 422437. 42 is 42 cubic inches. This is off of an 18 horsepower opposed twin engine. The basic design series is the next number, which would be that 2. Then the crankshaft orientation is the next number, which is a 4, and that comes in at a horizontal shaft. 0 to 4 is horizontal, 5 to 9 is vertical. In later models, A to G is horizontal, H to Z is vertical. And in the basic design series, there's not an actual description of what that is. You would have to contact Briggs, but that goes from 0 to 9 and then A to Z. You come over to the type, and I'm sorry, we're not done over here yet. Now we've got the 4, which is a horizontal orientation, and then we have the third number or number series after the displacement which is the PTO bearing, reduction gear, auxiliary drive, and lubrication types. So this one is a three and a three would be ball bearing, flange, mounting, splash lube. Then we go to the last set, fourth digit after displacement which would be the seven. It is the type of starter. This particular one is an electric start 12 or 24 volt gear drive with alternator. So, how do I know all this? Well, you guys can go on Google and just Google Briggs engine identification. And in doing that, you will be able to retrieve your very own key to the fine to the world's finest engines and it will tell you how to decode all of your engines so give me just a second and then I'm going to show you another page that you can download as a PDF file for your torque specification so stay tuned forgot to tell you about the type and the code the type would be what it says right there the type number identifies the engine's mechanical parts, color of paint, decals, governed speed, and original equipment manufacturer. To determine all of that, again, you would have to contact Briggs & Stratton. You get into the code, this is how I always know what year Briggs is. 01 is the year, 06 the month, 12 is the day, 01 is the assembly line and manufacturing plant. This is just an example on here. If I was to look at what we were looking at before, this plate here, it is a type 0749-01 and then made in 1987, the second month, the fourth day, and the manufacturing plant and max and assembly line would be one two so I hope that was helpful now we're going to do the torque spec guide that I've got and I will leave links in the description for both of these PDF downloads they're invaluable when you're working on your engines so stay tuned I will be right back all right, now we're on the check chart. Common specs for all popular engine models. Um, this covers L-head aluminum cast sleeve single cylinders. You can see that right here. And what it gives you is, it'll tell you the model series, and then your idle speed, armature air gap, which is your magnetron or magneto, your valve clearances for both intake and exhaust, the reject gauge, flywheel nut in foot-pounds, cylinder head in foot in inch-pounds, 
connecting rod torque in inch pounds, crankcase cover sump in inch pounds, your mag journal diameter, crank pin journal diameter, PTO journal diameter, crankshaft end play, main bearing reject gauge or reject dimension, cylinder bore standard. That's a lot of information and it covers, like I say, the L-head aluminum cast sleeve single cylinders, L-head cast iron single cylinders, L-head opposed twin cylinders, overhead valve single cylinders, overhead valve twin cylinders. So this is an, also an, an invaluable piece of information for helping you guys to properly torque your uh, engines in, in whatever manner and also to properly gauge. And when I say gauge you see this six thousandths to ten thousandths right here for the armature air gap. Well that's the distance between the flywheel and the magneto. Your valve clearance. That's using a feeler gauge with the flywheel or the piston in the compression stroke at top dead center is where you would measure it and that's the feeler gauge that should fit in a cold engine. I stress that, a cold engine. The reason for a cold engine as opposed to a one that's warmed up is those numbers allow for expansion. As the engine heats up these numbers close so you have to have these gaps so that when the engine comes up to operating temperature you are not going to end up smashing things into one another and causing a whole bunch of problems that you really don't want. So again I will link both of these pages in the description below and thank everybody very much for all of your support. Please do me a solid and smash that like button for me. It helps me out in order for me to help you guys out. That's it. And if, you, if you're not subscribed and you find my videos interesting, please do go ahead and subscribe. And then there's a little bell icon right beside the subscribe button. If you click on that, you will get automatic notifications of every video that I post as I post them. So that you don't have to come by and by chance. You'll be notified. That's it. Friendly Neighborhood Zippo. I will see you guys on the next one. I promise. Later. I'm out.